And what's up, everybody, and welcome back to What's the Deal, a Deal Automotive podcast. I am your host, TJ Bowser, and joining me today, we have a very, very special guest, the one, the only, Mr. Rich Grossman. Buddy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, TJ. It's an honor to be here with you. We got a couple things to go over today, and we'll just start it off right now. So you're about to finish things up here. At Deal I am. And uh, I, I am. think June, right? June, yes. June, June yes. will be, uh, June 23rd is my 60th birthday, and that's what I'm planning on doing is heading into the sunset. So will you, your uh, retirement party and birthday party, you'll be like a all-in-one? A one, yeah, oh. one great big party. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the way to do it. So my first question for you, so as you approach retirement, can you reflect on your journey as the general manager of Deal of Butler? What are some of the most memorable moments and achievements throughout your career? Well, you know, the journey started a long time ago, 40 years ago. Um, I was on my way back from California. I lived there for a, a short couple of years. And when I came back, my dad called me in Texas. Uh, got stuck in a snowstorm in Texas, actually. <laughs> and my dad, we had to call. No cell phones, guys. Yes, no cell phones, no computers, that. none of that stuff. And uh, so I uh, called my dad. He goes, hey, I got a... Uh, a job interview for you the coming up here. And, and when you get home, you will, you mm. know, stop and just talk to his name was Ralph Montag. He was the body shop manager. And then John Hicks was the parts manager. And so I stop here on my way back from, from what was California. It, called it was called Trossel Oldsmobile Jeep. No, Oldsmobile Dodge Toyota. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was Dodge Toyota then. Wow. That, yeah. that really is bad. <laughs> And they were literally just building that, what is now the Toyota showroom. They were just building that building. At oh, that okay. Point. Yeah. So that was that was just being built back in the in, in those years. Um, so I, I pull in and uh, talk to John Hicks. And he said, hey, can you start tomorrow? I'm like, holy shit, give me one day. Like, I, I want to at least take a day. I just drove 3,000 miles. Yeah. So I took a day and then uh, started delivering parts and kind of emptying garbage Scrubbing toilets, cleaning yeah. up, you know, that kind of stuff. And as that progressed, I uh, went up to a parts counter guy, uh, parts counter, you know, assistant manager, manager, worked my way through that. And as things changed, uh, we we ended up, you know, I became the parts manager. But as people left and came and went, I sat in many seats. I would sit in the uh, – I, I sat a stint even in the office. I sat a stint in the body shop, service, service writer. So I kind of covered all the, the bases. And at that point, I still never was involved in sales, never never had anything that – any reason to go to sales. I stayed in fixed operations and, and spent, you know, many years from there, from what was that, 83 to 99. 99 was when uh, Matt Deal, at that point, Matt Deal had purchased, Senior. yeah, Matt yeah. Deal and Bob Preston and Karina had, they had purchased the store here in Butler from the Trossel family. And um, Matt asked me to, you know, actually, he asked me to be a partner at one point, but I had to okay. go through the the, the uh, sales process, you know, go th yeah. through that. And heck, I had never even really purchased a car. So what year did uh, Matt Sr. buy the uh that would have been 95, 95. August of 1995. Okay. The family purchased uh, with Bob Preston as as they were operating yeah. partners. And Bob um, and Matt were partners for a while. When did uh, Bob, Bob exit the scene? Somewhere around 2001. Okay. I think it was in that area, somewhere around there. I uh, don't remember exactly, but it was it was somewhere around 2001, 2002-ish. Um and at that point, um, I had sat in a sales manager spot, sat in a okay. general sales manager and then general manager as we moved through it. And then, uh, unfortunately, in 2007, Matt passed away. Yeah. Um, so that put me on the hot seat. I was, you know, that was a pretty big change. Karina was a stay-at-home mom. She didn't yeah. run the dealership, wasn't involved with it. But we got through all that. After, you know, it, it, it was a fight, but we got through it. And it was a lot at that point. There was a lot going on in the market. You know, that was the downfall. 2008 yeah. was the market shit the bed on us. And, and the next thing you know, we were, yeah, somewhere. we were literally, uh, they were eliminating dealers, Chrysler yeah. dealers. They were, yeah, GM closed a lot of their uh, subsidiaries. And, they did. Yeah. And so we were, we were literally waiting for that letter to come in to say if we yeah. were still a dealer oh, or not. And, yeah. Yeah, it was tough, but you know, we're a good store. It's got a great customer base mm -hmm. and we got good people, 
working for us. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's all about the people. If, if you don't have great people working around you and surrounding you, you got empty buildings. Yeah. So what about some of the most memorable moments? You know, it's something that, that we talked about earlier and memorable. I have so many. Um, I mean, I got great ones and I got some crazy yeah. ones. Um, <laughs> you know, some of the great moments obviously was, you know, for me, I guess just making all this go with with the employees we had and, and making all of the – making it happen uh, yeah. over the years. And there's – you know, most people don't realize how complex a car dealership is and everything yeah. that goes on. Um you know, I call them silos, but you have each each department's kind of run individually. It's they they run individually, but yet they have to run together. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a watch. It is. Yeah, yeah lots of small working parts, and they all have to work together in order for the whole thing to work. Absolutely. Yeah. And and you know, and one of the things that that I was very adamant about, and I call them walls. I don't want walls between my departments. I want yeah. my sales manager talking to my service manager, talking to my parts manager, talking to my body shop manager, and uh, I just am really adamant about making sure that those that those walls don't go up between the departments because it's crucial to the success of the dealership. Yes. Um, some of the crazy things that's happened to me, I've uh, unfortunately I've had customers attack me. <laughs> um, I've had uh, people sing to me. I, I, it's endless. It's endless. Well, TJ, I mean, you were uh, <laughs> you got to experience what it was like to go through the COVID pandemic with the yes. automotive industry. And that was definitely a unique situation. It was. Um, one thing cool about that is what we realized when that happened to us was that people still need vehicles. Yeah. And the state shut us down. And, you know, we had to really get creative and figure out how to get cars yeah. for people. Um, we were able to use our Ohio stores to help us through some of that. They had people had to go to Ohio to buy cars because they could not buy them in Pennsylvania. Uh, for those who don't know, we have uh, six locations over in Maslin, Ohio. Yeah. So that, that was challenging. And, uh, you know, the world kept turning. You know, we had a lot of people's leases that expired. We had a lot of people that um, had had wrecked their car and were the, the insurance companies made them get out of the loaner cars. Oh, so they um, had no choice. So they had no choice but to, to purchase a car. Somehow they had to get wheels and uh, honestly, we helped a lot of people out that way. I, I can remember a, a lady that was a nurse that, that had retired and she got called up. She's like, I need a car. I, I have to. They're calling me to go to hospitals. And I, I don't remember which city she had to go to, but uh, she needed a, a one of them reliable. Traveling nurses. Yeah. yeah. She needed a reliable car to get to the hospitals that she needed to travel to. So I was able to line her up with a car and many scenarios like that. that Especially first responders should have had access to transportation at that time. They needed that, especially in a crucial moment where you know, the general populace needed nurses. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That was tricky. That was really tricky for us to work through. And you know, what was wild at that time too, is we had literally uh, whatever that the 20th of whatever date that was with the, that next weekend, we got hit by a huge, huge hailstorm. Yes. Yes. And that hail Hailstorm damage. I'm going to say it was between seven and eight hundred of our cars. Wow, seven to eight hundred cars with hail damage. Because our Butler lot is very, very. Large. Oh, it's just it's, yeah, yeah. It's thirteen acres. Wow, and then it's only to be expanded now further with sure the over new here. Volkswagen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Volkswagen, we've got this store over here, and and obviously the office facility that we have. So there was a lot going on, um, and we literally had to uh, hire out. And, and Russians came in yes. and did the dent repairs. You showed me the boxes in yes. your office that are just stacked full of invoices yes. from those repairs. Yes. And, it's, and when I say boxes, people, I'm talking like half the wall is just boxes of invoices. It's, yeah. And, and that's a crazy situation. It's yeah. They went, hear a lot about. Yes. They went the whole way through. Uh, I can remember coming here Easter Sunday. Um, they were working, trying to just get them finished. And by the time everything uh, came around and we were able, allowed to open and sell cars. Now, yeah. we were still here for service in, in the collision yeah, centers. But by the time that came around, they had all the cars done. It was an amazing feat to get all those cars repaired in that period of time. Uh, I, as I could imagine. So. Changes in the automotive landscape. There's been a lot of changes over the years, especially right now. We're in the middle of this weird EV renaissance, which kind of is happening, but kind of yeah. not happening at the same time. But uh, like I said, changes have happened. So you've seen the industry evolve from the beginning of your tenure till now. What are some of the challenges and opportunities that has shaped your role? 
Become well, a, one thing that I, I do remember is, you know, when I started, uh, minivans were woody minivans. Yeah. So, you know, and that was the first year for, uh, for Chrysler for their minivan. So just having that. And look where we are we, now. Yeah. Yeah. One Chrysler Pacific and that's all Stellantis offers. For minivans, right. So. Right. Now Toyota still offers a van. Yeah. Uh, Honda still offers a van. Um, but lots of changes through there. Mm -hmm. The, just the technology that's changed, um, you know, people used to drive their cars and were worried if the radio didn't work. Now they're they're upset if their cell phone doesn't connect to their car to make sure that they can call yeah. on the on the the car. The amount of computers in these. Yeah, I mean, we did we had power modules back then. We yeah. did have computers, but but and they controlled a lot of fuel mixtures. They controlled some of the lighting that, that had to happen. And 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 you know, I can remember the very first airbags that came out for it was on a Dodge Daytona. It was I and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it was one of the first airbags in any production car okay. with from any manufacturer, and uh, they were pretty sensitive. And we had a customer that got that. Uh, was messing around and he was sitting in his car and somebody bumped into it. Didn't wreck it. They hit it with a, a surfboard or something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but when they hit it, yeah. it set the airbag out, wow. blew his face apart, it broke his glasses. He had a heck no. of a mess going on. And uh, I can remember it was a silver and blue Dodge Daytona because we were all out there going, wow, look at this thing. Yeah. You know, the airbag went <laughs> off in this thing. And so things like that, yeah. cars are so much more sensitive right now and, and, and so many moving parts in them. It's, 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 totally amazes me that cars are reliable as they are only because of all the moving parts yeah. and all the technology that's in them today. So it's, it's really an amazing feat when you think of all the moving parts going down the road and there you are. It's, it, it, some of them are reliable. You obviously have problems with some. Some yeah. stuff happens, but when you look at the big picture, it's it's pretty amazing. So so with the EV stuff, what, uh, what challenges and hurdles have you uh, dealt with that? Well, with EV, we're still just kind of touching with that. We I mean, got a station though over at our dealership. We do for charging. Yeah, we have we have charging stations. We have, and as we build this Volkswagen building, they're going to have uh, charging stations out front yeah. with that. I mean, that's and I do be... know that in some of our locations, we offer free charging for uh, some of our EV vehicles. They do. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's challenging because everybody. It, it's kind of like when you went from, and I, and I know this is a weird comparison, but when you went from horse and buggy to cars. Okay. It, it's huge for, for most people because that change is like, whoa, whoa, whoa not, well, you know. Even the feel of, of driving them is, is a completely different feeling it is. Than, than gasoline vehicles. It's, yes. It's more the power's there when you push on the gas, and it's not the same way as it is with the gasoline. It, it, it is different. It is very different. Yeah. And the lack of sound is also yeah. another thing that you Golf carts. Use. Yes, it's a golf cart. <laughs> it, it is a golf cart. It's a cart. giant golf cart. Yes. <laughs> uh, my biggest problem that I find with them is, is the shut off or not? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> we was talking about highlights. You know, I, 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 back when Prius first came out, okay, that's, I'm showing my age there. 2006. But, yeah. Right. So when Prius came out, I can remember hopping in when I'm like, what, what do I do with this? Like, yeah. I don't even know what, where do you, what, how do you do it? And I can remember pulling it in or, and, and driving it somewhere and then pulling in and I didn't know how to shut it off. Yeah. So I'm like, is it on? Is it off? You couldn't tell. So those are, I mean, just fun stuff to learn. And speak about the Prius, that, that vehicle's come along. Oh, my. Yes. I think that yeah. current models might be the best version of the Prius we'll probably ever see. Yeah, it, it's a phenomenal product. And, and um, again, the, the, the thing that I like with Toyotas is, me personally, I like hybrid. Yeah. Um, we've experimented with, with these things, and sometimes they don't make it as far as the Prius is like the yeah. perfect yeah. hybrid right now. Yeah. 55 miles a gallon on yeah. that one. And then you have that optional with the uh, electric hybrid one where you have 40 miles of just all electric all and like, then the gas yeah. switches over. And then you still have another 400 miles to go on that. That's insane. You can't beat that. But that's where the industry is a whole headed. It, it is. It yeah. is. And, and you know, when I look at it, I think just for me personally is I, I feel that hybrid right now is the way to go. Yeah. Until they get some infrastructure, the infrastructure – it's just not all there yet no. for for electric vehicles. I don't think people understand how like what it's going to like require from the electrical grid alone just to power all these. Especially yeah. in California, they yeah. don't have the electrical grid to do that. But I think they have an initiative to be what z zero emissions by a certain date. They do. There's just yeah. no way that that's yeah. going to happen with the current yeah. power grid. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But we see a lot of these companies rolling back now. Uh, Volkswagen being one of them, trying to take things more hybrid oriented. Toyota, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and Toyota has led the way for many years. Yeah, you know, they're definitely absolutely. You know, the, Toyota for me in my career has been a wonderful company to work with. They, you know, they they are um, they're a great product and they are a great company to work with. Um, just over the years, the, the, the folks from Toyota for me have been wonderful to work with. Awesome. So earlier you mentioned, you know, some of your like techniques for, for managing and stuff and building a successful uh, dealership team. So leading that successful dealership team, what strategies have you employed to build and foster that high performing team? Well, first of all, I've always, you know, a few things that I learned when I was young is how I wanted to be treated. Yeah. And in this business, you have to, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. Of course. And that's the same with customers because that's what this is about is our customers. Mm -hmm. And if you treat somebody the way you would want to be treated, that's successful in, in my eyes. The same with your employees. Mm -hmm. if, if you have great employees, then you have to foster them and keep them happy, keep them motivated. And sometimes that's hard to do because they yes. have everyday lives. And, and honestly, I think with cell phones and technology, it's become even increasingly oh, difficult. Yes. Um, cause the distractions that happen, but More so that's, that, right that's now. part of the way it is. But for me, uh, I've always just managed, um, from, from a standpoint of, Hey, this is where we, this is what we want to get out of this person. Mm -hmm. How can we get there together? Yeah. And, and I, I think truly not to interrupt you here, but yeah. a good manager can bring out the best. In Absolutely. Everybody. Yes. Yes. And, and I always, you know, if, if I lose an employee or I have a problem with employee, the first person I look at is the mirror. Yeah. Because I think, what did I do that, that messed this situation up? Mm -hmm. Or what, what happened that this went wrong? And I got to look at myself first. And if I realize, well, it's not necessarily me, it's what, you know, whatever situation happened, but that's, that's life. Yes. And so I always kind of look at, and, 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 and when somebody has left in the past, I've always gone, you know what, how could have I made this better? What, what did I miss that, that, that person left or, or what did, you know, what did I do that made that, that person work harder? Yeah. And believe it or not, it's just knowing them, knowing their families, getting involved with them. Um, sometimes when we're as big as we are and we have grown this company, um, that's difficult to do. Yeah. And, and that's part of my nature and my makeup. So that's one of the difficult things for me that's been is, is our growth yeah. and, and not being able to go out and remember everybody's name. Yeah. So that's hard for me. That's, that's, that's difficult. And with the whole family thing being part of our mission statement here deal, that, that family aspect and that environment we're trying to foster, that's like you said, with the ever growing expansion of deal automotive, 22 locations right now, right. And just ever expanding. And like you said, it's, and, and, and yeah, that's, that's one of the things that, that I struggle with I personally. Is, would. And, and yeah. but I know it has to happen because you, you're not, you know, you don't become successful and grow without some sort of cost. Yes. Whether Absolutely. it be financial cost, emotional cost, whatever that cost is, it's going to be there. And it's how you manage it through that that makes the difference. So self-evaluation, developing those relationships with your employees, yep. stuff like that. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So uh, with the automotive market is dynamic, how have you navigated and adapted to the market shifts and changes and consumer preferences? Well, you listen to the consumer. Yeah. You listen to the consumer and give them what they want. If a consumer approaches you about a specific car and you don't know that model or you don't know what's going on with that model, you have to say, raise your hand and say, you know what? I don't know, but I will get you the answers. Yeah. And that makes a big difference to a consumer. You don't always have to have the right answer right out of the chute, but if they know you're working hard for them yes. to get that answer, you're going to get, 100%. you're going to earn a customer. And I've been blessed over the years to have, uh, I literally have my third grade teacher that has purchased cars from me. My, my band choir teacher <laughs> has purchased cars from me most of my life. My seventh grade teacher has purchased cars from us all through, all through the years. That's they, they, yeah, they've been, they've know they've kind of followed me through and knew what, what I was doing and I've been able to build those relationships with them. That also shows the consistency that you guys have. Though. Yeah. Yeah. And your ability to retain that. Yes. Consumers, yeah. yeah. So legacy and legacy. succession planning. <laughs> so as we wrap things up here, and as we mentioned at the top of the episode, you are on your way out. This is the uh, the tail end of a very historic career. How have you approached legacy building at Deal of Butler? And what are your considerations and what considerations are important in ensuring a smooth transition to the next generation? Well, the, you know, I look back and I, I guess I don't 
think of myself as a legacy, but yeah. I mean, I guess some people see it that way. I, do, I just think that I worked hard. I showed up every day and I made sure that, that it mattered what I did every day yeah. with the customers, with the employees and tried to make a difference in their lives. And, and I would say it's probably countless people that have helped that I probably forgot about already that I don't even remember helping. But uh, recently I've had some people come back and say things to me like, holy cow, I, can't, I, I did do that. I, I, you know, so that's kind of neat. Um, the transition, we have Mike Jevchek. Uh, he was at their Grove City store. He and I started working here in January. We're going to give it a six-month run. I'm going to make sure that he got everything that, that, that he needs to be successful. Yeah. One of the big things that, that I talked to Karina about uh, is – and I, I talked to Ian and, and Anthony about this and, you know, I got a little emotional about it, but the bottom line is, is I want to go away knowing that everything behind me is great yeah. and good. Mm -hmm. I, I want to know that what I've done, my hard work has mattered and, and made sure that people moving forward can can run business the same way that, that I would want to run it in the same way that we have run Absolutely. it for all these years. And for me, that's, that's my reward. Uh, I don't, I don't need accolades i don't you know by, knowing that standard yeah the knowing that the deal automotive all the years i've spent here made a difference to be able to carry on mm -hmm. and, and grow the way it has that's for me is just that's that's a huge huge for me and so i ask that, that we take the time get the right person in to replace me mm -hmm. and make sure that that I give him every ounce of everything I've got to be be successful. Yeah. Um, obviously, sometimes change is difficult for people. They get used to you. But I think uh, Mike and I have already started. I mean, we're finishing each other's sentences. We're, we're making sure that uh, we both have our, our – you know, our checklists and, and we're going through those and we're making sure that we're, we're covering each other and making sure that our communication is, is, that is synchronization. Is, is, yeah. Yeah. Is, is together with each other. And, um, so I'm, I'm happy that that is working out. It's, it's going to be a smooth transition. Uh, and I'm working very hard to make sure that happens. Yes. And that is Mike Jeff Keck. He will be coming to this podcast in a future episode. So you guys will be able to meet him uh, very, very soon. So wrapping things up, man, thanks for coming on today. Thanks oh, absolutely. Thanks for talking it's, about your story here. This, I mean, this, is, this has been a huge part of my life. This has been my whole life for the last 40 years of, of taking care of this business. I, I made Matt deal a promise that, that I would look out for him, his, his, his business, his family, his money, his, whatever, whatever I needed to do to, to make sure that we could move this company forward. And I mean, look, look where we've gone. It's, it's incredible. It's, it's truly amazing. Yeah. So where are you going after Jim? So, um, you know, I, for those folks that know me, I, you know, I'm very passionate about motorcycles. Um, and I personally own a power sports business. We have a Kawasaki, Suzuki, Yamaha, Beta, Moto Marini dealership. Um, parallels car business completely. It's the same thing. <laughs> Um, and my children run that business now and my plans are to not get in the way, mm -hmm. but just be dad, help them out, make sure that they're successful. Um, we have a lot of plans, uh, for building a new facility that's all in the works right wow. now. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've outgrown where we're at and I, so I've finishing got, off your legacy here and building another moment. Yeah. Um, for my kids, yes. you know, I've, I've worked hard. Um, you sacrifice a lot in this business mm -hmm. and when you do that, uh, you want to give back. And that's Absolutely. one of the things that I've been blessed to be able to do. And uh, I've, I've purchased a motorhome, so my wife and I are going to make some <laughs> road trips. I have a lot of friends literally all over the country and, and Canada that, that I've been friends with for many years. And uh, we're going to hit the road and visit a lot of people. We're going to, you know, one of my bucket list things for me is to go to uh, Europe, Italy, Switzerland, Austria, and then ride the Swiss Alps on a motorcycle. So that's, oh, yeah. that is coming up. Yeah, that's coming up. Uh, I just got to plan that. I'm probably a year and a half out from that, but that's one of the things I definitely uh, have been on my bucket list to get away and, and do. So, and I have five grandkids. So wow, I'll I am going to, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to spend a ton of time with my grandkids. Uh, you know, if I'm asked to babysit, I'm raising my hand, I'm doing it. And yeah. so that's, that's what makes the difference for me. That's, that's where I'm headed. Sounds like you're going to enjoy retirement. I plan on enjoying <laughs> it a lot. That's awesome. That's awesome. So once again, thanks for coming on. And My pleasure. Yes. And we will see you guys on the next episode of What's the Deal? This has been TJ Bowser signing off.